Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over Nagel's Rule. This video is part of an NCLEX review series over maternity nursing. So if you're studying maternity, be sure to check out the other videos in my playlist. And as always in the YouTube description below, you can access the free quiz that goes along with this lecture which will test you on calculating Nagel's Rule. So let's get started. First, let's start out talking about what is Nagel's Rule. Nagel's Rule is a calculation used for estimating the due date of a baby, and it's based on a woman's last menstrual period. Now, this calculation that you get with Nagel's Rule is an estimation because it bases its calculation that the woman has a 28-day cycle, which many women vary on their cycle length, and the typical gestation period of 280 days, which is 40 weeks. And we know that um, a lot of times first time mothers can go over that 40 weeks. So this number is just an estimation. Now, one thing you wanna keep um, in the back of your mind while you're calculating Nagel's rule is that you need to remember the months that have 30 days versus 31 days. And of course, February, you will always give it 28 days, regardless of, a, of if a leap year is that year, just to keep things simple. So to help you remember which months have 30 versus 31, I recommend remembering the mnemonic that maybe you were taught as a child um, that goes as the following. 30 days, half September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31 except February alone. So those months that have 30 days, September, April, June, and November, and all the rest have 31. Now let's look at those calculation formulas that um, you need to remember when calculating Nagel's rule. There's two of them. Um, the first one you can use where you can have the last menstrual period of the woman and you will subtract three months from that, add seven days to the last menstrual period and then add one year and then you'll get your estimated due date. Or you can use this. You can add seven days to the last menstrual period and then add nine months and that'll give you the estimated due date. Now the thing with these is that, as you can see here, if your woman's last menstrual period was January through March, it's best to use this calculation to keep things simple compared to this one because for instance, um, if the woman's last menstrual period was in January, we just know nine months from January, we'll be calculating out she'll be having it within that same year. However, if you're not paying attention and you're using this one, you'll add a year to it, putting it in the next year. And you know on tests that they will have both options, so you don't want to select the wrong ones. So just to help keep you straight and keep things simple, if the last menstrual period is January through March, use this one. If the last menstrual period is April through December, use this one. Now let's work a problem. I'm gonna work two. I'm gonna work one yeah, that's relatively easy. Then I wanna work a tricky one after this and see if you um, know how to work it. So if you want, just work these along with me. Okay, we're given a scenario. A lot of times the question's gonna say, patient's at her prenatal visit and um, thinks she may be pregnant or she is pregnant. And she says that her last menstrual period was September 2nd, 2016. Using Nagel's rule, when is the estimated due date? Okay, so September 2nd, 2016. Falls within April to December, so let's use this calculation. So what we're gonna do is we're going to subtract three months through September. So I just, this is how I like to do it to keep things straight. So we're gonna subtract three months, and that's gonna give us June 2nd, 2016. Then we're going to add seven days to this. So we're gonna add seven days. And that's going to give us June 9th, 2016. Then we're going to add a year. And that's going to give us June 9th, 20. 17. So that is our estimated due date for a woman who had a last menstrual period on September 2nd, 2016. Now let's look at the tricky one. 
Okay, the last menstrual period was September 28th, 2016. So it falls within the April to December range. So it's best we use this calculation. So what we'll do is we'll subtract three months from September 28th. And three months from September is June. So June 28th, 2016. Now we're going to add seven days. And this is where your little mnemonic comes in. Because remember, in June, there is only 30 days. So seven days out from June 28th would put us in the next month, which would be July 5th. 2016. Now we need to add a year and that will put us at July 5th, 2017. So our estimated due date is July 5th, 2017. Now let me just show you if you use this one instead, why it would throw it off. Let me erase this. Okay, so say you did this instead. Um, wanted to use this one. So what you would do, you would add seven days to September and you know that there's only 30 days in September. So that would put us at October 5th, 2016. Then we would count nine months. Okay, well, nine months out from October is July. So it would be July 5th. And a lot of people don't remember to flip it over to the next year, so they might end up putting just 2016 instead of adding 2017. So that's where if you're comfortable and you'll remember to add that extra year, then of course use whatever calculation you want. But if you're like me and you need to keep things straight, um, just remember this calculation is best for that, that month, those months, January through March. And this calculation is best April through December because like I said, if you use that calculation on that, you may put your answers July 5th, 2016 when it should be July 5th, 2017. Okay, so that is about Nagel's rule. Now go to my website, registernursrn.com and um, work some practice questions to see how well you grasp this material. And don't forget to check out my other videos and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.